Welcome back everyone, I'm Shortcut Sherry and it's another Tip Tuesday. We're continuing with our task management series this week with SharePoint lists. Last week I showed you the Microsoft list option. This is the SharePoint list and it's not new. It's been around for a couple of decades and it's been my best friend for tracking tasks when I'm collaborating with other people. I'd like to show you a couple of tricks that I've learned along the way and then we're going to allude to some cool stuff that we're going to do next week and the following week with Outlook and Project. The default view of a task list is the All Tasks view. When you're working with a SharePoint list and specifically the task list, it's in a classic format. It may look a little different from the Microsoft list, but it has a lot of functionality that the Microsoft list don't have yet. The format is in the classic view. In classic view, we have two tabs at the upper left. You have the task tab, which lets you manage specific tasks. If you select a task, you'll see the options light up for that task. Then you have the list tab, which lets you manage the list. And one of the most important groups in here is the manage views group. The default view is the all task view. But there are multiple other views, including a calendar, your completed tasks, and click the little dot 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 for some other options including Gantt chart, late tasks, my tasks, or upcoming. The key thing to keep in mind is when you navigate to another view like the Gantt chart view, you may have to go back to the list tab to change it back to the all tasks view. So just keep that in mind, those tabs are up there for navigating. Now if you're working in a project Usually you don't just have a flat list of tasks. There is some interactivity including subtasks and even some dependencies between those tasks. What I'm going to show you now is how to create that hierarchy within a list itself. So let's go to the task tab and then select some tasks. Using the options in the hierarchy group of the task tab, you can indent and outdent to create your subtask view if you need to. Let's use indent. And now I have a summary task and subtasks. You can create multiple levels if needed. If you need to promote an item, you can click the outdent option. And certain tasks can be added to the timeline, so if they're milestones, you might want to have them on the timeline like this one. Probably my favorite view that I use is the My Task view. I'm going to stop editing this list. And if you scroll down in the list, you'll see the last ones are assigned to Nestor. In the View options, I have the option for My Tasks. This is a dynamic view that reads who is logged in at that current time and filters the task list based on who it's assigned to. These are the only ones that are assigned to Megan as I am logged in as Megan Bowen. At any time, I can switch back to any of the other views. One of the huge benefits of working with lists like this is you can actually customize them, which you can't always do as easily in other applications. From the List tab, you can create new columns to track a multitude of different types of data. Here are some of the options that are available. Unfortunately, in a Tip Tuesday, I can't show you all the nuances of creating a new column, but I just want to make you aware that this is available. You can also create your own views. Using the fields that are provided, you can add additional views. Give them a name hide and show the different columns and reorder them. And those now become options for selecting for your views. That's my tip for this week. Next week we're going to talk about how SharePoint task list views work with Microsoft Outlook. Yes, I said Outlook. 
If you are a task management person and you manage your tasks out of Outlook, or you work with people that do, this is going to be your favorite tip. And until next time, I'm Shortcut Sherry, and it's my job to make your job easier.